All right, so thank you everyone for joining us to talk about our reference data process. Um, and thanks for all of the effort that folks have spent reviewing and providing feedback on um, the process over the past month or so. Um, I've, I've taken and reviewed a lot of that feedback and incorporated uh, a good amount of that, I believe. Um, so what we'll, what we'll sort of plan to do today is to level set on the process that we're moving forward with um, and to answer questions that um, you might have about the process. Um, overall, I think what I want to, the, the, the perspective that I want to try to share and have us agree upon is let's try this and see how it works. And um, and if there are adjustments and tweaks that we need to make along the way, um, we can certainly uh, plan to do so. Um, we have this wiki page that many of you are familiar with that I'm showing um, that we're hoping can serve as like the home page about reference data in the future uh, and now, I guess. The first section about reference data sets um, this this section will evolve, but it, it's a work in progress and is not complete right now, and so don't spend too much time evaluating it. I'm not going to spend much time talking about it right now. Um, but I am going to move on to the section about standard reference data scope. Um, I, I believe when we talk about the process, there are references to providing um, that, that Maryland as an institution will provide data in accordance with our agreement about a standard reference data scope. And we can request as needed to sort of extend beyond that standard um, for a particular data set or for, for a particular piece of functionality. This reflects what the decision that was made to of what amount of data to deliver for M1 through M5 um, and mirrors um, some of the decisions that had been previously made about the, the data that the UW was providing uh, when it, with its reference data set. Um, but most of you are, are familiar um, with this scope. We've selected um, five subject codes, biological sciences, chemistry, English, history, and physics. And um, Maryland provide, will provide data with, around uh, courses, course offerings, and et cetera, related to those subject codes, um, and has done so for the fall 2012 term. Any questions on? We're also using women's studies. Women's studies has recently been added, or is is is, is that added? Was is that being used in a one-off sense, or being added to the standard scope? Um, I would say it's been added to the standard. Great. We've been using it for complex. If I can request somebody to take notes for me on items that need to be changed on this page as a result of this meeting, um, that would be one of them that I'd want to add women's studies. Okay. I'll do that. Okay. All right. Thanks, Jen. Okay. So. Mike. Sorry, Mike. Hi, Nina. Would the CRUMS data fall within those clue and course offering data sets? The, the rules data was not included in the M1, in what was delivered for M1 to M5. Um, and so that, um, that we will need to add and, and we'll, we'll need to add the data and then we can add that to what we consider to be our standard. Okay. Okay. 
I know many of you have looked at this page, and I asked by email if you could um, review it in advance of the meeting. Um, but since I'm looking to use this recording for training purposes, I'm going to kind of talk through it a little bit. Um, and, um, you know, more than I necessarily would if, you know, otherwise I might just ask you questions or something like that. Um, the, the first step in our reference data process occurs um, when we identify configuration needs for one or more epics um, during the service design phase of our development methodology. Um, and, and that work happens in collaboration by services, ana core analysis, and the implementing institution. Um, so I'll scroll down a little bit to our table where, you know, our goal there is to identify the required types and states for the implementing institution. The, the next phase that I'd anticipate happening during initial service design um, is to uh, conduct a data analysis handoff meeting when the, um, the services team um, is, is happy with the, the work done on the service contract and the DTO such that the um, implementing institution can begin their data analysis using that DTO. Um, there will be, we're calling for a handoff meeting. Um, the implementing institution will certainly be involved in participating in that handoff meeting. Uh, core services is responsible for that handoff meeting. And um, we should confirm, you know, our, our plan for and how any changes to the GTO after that meeting are communicated to the implementing institution. Um, my assumption is that can happen in a very lightweight way between Tom and Aaron, um, or however you guys sort of agree to that, um, you know, in, in dialogue that you might have, um, you know, in that, in that first handoff meeting. Aaron would be responsible for bringing whatever Maryland people need to attend, um, and Tom would be responsible for bringing whatever services people need to attend, um, so that the um, implementing institution can understand sort of the, the goals and objectives of what we're trying to accomplish through the service contract and the format of the data as represented by the DTO. If we can identify at that point in time that we'll need additional data beyond the standard scope, I think it'd be great for us to try to do that. We may, as a function of core analysis work that's happened, um, be able to realize that, or through some quick brainstorming that might happen in that handoff meeting, that, that need could come about also. Any questions about the, these tasks that are happening um, during the service design phase of, of our development methodology? So hearing none, the next group of tasks that happens after that data analysis handoff meeting um, is, is mostly happening um, within the um, implementing institution team. Um, there, there is expected to be notification if there are DTO changes from services um, during the, or while these tasks are happening, if that, if that occurs. Um, but, but the tasks are mapping institutional data to the service contract, extracting and transforming the data, and distributing reference data. So let me scroll down and we'll talk more about what those mean. The mapping of institutional data to the service contract um, means that, that the implementing institution 
is determining how to map its data to the services um, in preparation for extracting and transforming it. The DTO is our intended file format for exchanging reference data. So, um, so the mapping of those fields to the DTO is pretty critical. Um, this process can get triggered once that data analysis handoff meeting occurs. Um, another important goal of what we expect to happen during this, this task or during this step is for the implementing institution to identify if there are um, circumstances in which the way Maryland does its business or the way in which its data are, um, it, it, the way in which its data exists um, don't follow KS practices or KS functional goals um, such that some alternative plan might need to be identified because Maryland just doesn't have the data to, to provide um, and to, to, to map to the, to the DTO. If that circumstance arises, um, it's important for us to recognize that the, the role we've asked Maryland to undertake as the implementing institution is to represent itself not to represent some conglomeration of the founding and partner institutions, not to represent um, functionality that KS is trying to accomplish beyond what Maryland's um, you know, existing business processes represent. Um, we've done things like that in the past, and we've had challenges with trying to have a reference data set that um, that was sort of a Frankenstein. Um, and, and so we were, were, with the implementing institution strategy, we're looking to move away from that. And so the ask of Maryland in its role has been to represent itself. Um, if Maryland identifies that it does not do, act, follow kind of what we're asking for through the, um, the service contract and the DTO and the data needs for that epic or group of user stories, we're asking Maryland to identify that as soon as it can in its mapping process. Um, and to, and do, to, to do so, notify me as a product manager. Um, and I would start to assemble a small group of people um, that understand what, we're, what KS is looking for and what Maryland has to work out uh, an action plan for how we deal with that issue. It, it likely would mean a need to mock reference data if KS feels strongly about including that, um, that need in its reference data set, and that quite likely could be the case, that KS really does feel a need to include that. Um, there's no, there may be no way around it, and we may need to come up with an action plan for how we mock that data. Um, but, but it's most likely that that mocking of data is gonna occur within KS or specifically within a PDT um, and, and, not that they, and not coming from Maryland. Although we may, in that discussion, identify that, um, that may, the, the circumstances are such that, that perhaps Maryland could go ahead and mock the data. You know, maybe it's just a little bit of effort beyond transforming something that they currently do, um, and we'll sort of negotiate and deal with those circumstances on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, I'll, let me move through the next couple steps, and then I'll pause for, for questions or discussion. Um, the, the next step is um, extracting and transforming the reference data set, um, meaning that once we have the, once Maryland has accomplished the data mapping, it will work with technical resources on the campus as necessary to uh, pull data from its, um, its data tables 
to perform transformations of the data to match the DTO data structures um, and to create uh, flat files that correspond to those structures. Expectation is still that services is consulting if DTO changes happen so that those changes can be accommodated in the, in the data set being provided. And then once the, the with task five or step five, um, distributing the reference data, once the, the data are available for use um, and that flat file has been created, um, Maryland will um, post a link to that flat file on the, the, the on this page that we're that we're in that section up at the top that we're hoping will serve as our central repository of flat files. Any questions about these? Or discussion about these steps. I yeah, I did have. Um, I had a question about about the mocking of the data. Um, so I think that I think that that process makes sense, and I also think that it's helpful to continue to strive towards um, making sure that um, that the implementing institution raises the issue as soon as they know that there's a gap. I think that's really helpful. But I think that I'm just I've been looking ahead um, to, and thinking about like. Um, external scheduler and thinking about like the data that's around something like that. So I'm thinking about where there's where there are bigger gaps. It's not just, you know, a little bit of work beyond the transformation, but where it's like a big fundamental process that UMD doesn't do. And I'm wondering what would that be the same approach? Would it be most likely that, you know, it would be identified during design and then assumed that the PDT was doing it? Or is it when something and when it's something that big, would we have a different attack plan? That's why I think, to, to me, the attack plan is the case-by-case -case evaluation and then confirming whether the PDT needs to mock data or whether we're coming up with an alternate arrangement. To okay. give an example of how we dealt with something like this um, in, in the M1 to M5 data, um, we recognized that KS had requested delivery logistics and actual delivery logistics. And Maryland only had actual delivery logistics. That's all there was. So we met, we had a discussion about how to deal with that gap, and we determined that Maryland would provide the provide its data as both requested delivery logistics and actual delivery logistics, assuming that it, was, it thereby meant every request was met. <laughs> um, which, which may not be sort of the exact business process that you know the reality of a business process, I should say, but we can but we had a reference data set to, to work with as a result of that. Yeah. Um, so we'll have to we'll have to in the in the circumstance that you arise when we have a better sense of what we what we need around the external scheduler and whether we're really looking for our reference data set to have some kind of variety between the request to delivery logistics and the actual delivery logistics, then we'll have to cross our bridge, figure out what, what, what's the, how we cross that bridge. Um, but in, in terms of the, when we start to scratch beneath the surface at what we need for an external scheduler, things like room and building inventories or preferences for who gets to use a, a particular room. Um, I would suspect that Maryland has information around that, um, even though it doesn't use an external scheduler. Thanks, Mike. Hopefully, hopefully I'm not looking at this through rose-colored glasses, um, but um, you know, I, I, I'd expect that um, that no, knowing sort of what the DTOs look like, going when we get to the stage where we see what where the DTO what the DTOs look like for for work with the external scheduler, and we know what data needs exist on the other side of the of the the boundary, like on the external scheduler side, um, then we'll really see how much of a gap there is. 
Okay. Thank you. Um, let me actually um, pause and ask if if Tom is on the call to ask you know for ask to get a pulse check from you about you know how, how to the extent that you know the the bulk of the involvement from core services is sort of up to this point that we've talked through. Can I get a pulse check from you on on how you feel about the process? that we've laid out here? Um, I think the process feels good from my perspective. Uh, the only question that I had in my mind was that up to this point, we're pretty much in core. And once we get into the PDTs, there may be further DTO changes. And is core services expect expecting to, expected to, um, follow up with Aaron or would that be driven from the PDT side? If there's, to me, if there, and I had that question as well, is there, are we expected to provide the backfill data? If the DTO changes, like if we notice something today on the course offering service, a column that we have not provided before, and I guess it's new, um, and, required, and required. So now do we need to go back and work with East Coast to have that data back still loaded or who, I don't know, something to work out. Yes, and, and I, I, mean, I would suspect that we will, if the issue will arise. We, we will get to new functionality and we will extend the ETOs. For example, we'll get to fees and finances, you know, at some point in the future and we'll need to indicate what our, our course offering fees are. And, and we'll need to add that to the reference data that we'd previously provided. So, so yes, I'd expect there to be backfilling that will have to take place. Um, I, in the example I gave, I would hope that we'll, ident like, we'll identify that as part of the service design for that new feature. So that will happen more as a function of what has you know the, the first steps here, but if the, if the DTO gets changed as a result of the um, of a PDT work, it's a it's, it's a good question that we should clarify. What's the what's the expectation of is it the is it the PDT that is is making that notification or is it core services? And a lot of the process that I've laid out kind of calls for the PDT to be making those data requests. Um, but I, um, you know, we can, I, I'm open to discussion on this. So the services will let the PDTs know there's going to change and then? No, because like at the PDT level, if there's a DTO change, it's typically done by the PDT. Oh, okay. PDT makes the yeah. oh, okay. So it depends on who makes the change. If the services make the change, then it's it's kind of on their either responsibility to either tell the PDT. It's, where in the process are you? If, it's, if, it's, if the PDT is doing it now, it's the PDT's responsibility to tell them. Okay. If the service is making a change, they say, hey, PDT, I'm making a big change. You're going to have to deal with this. They tell us, and we deal with the issues that you're going to do. But even if services were to make the change once the PDT is working on it, I, I suspect that the PDT really needs to be coordinate impact of that on what they already know about the reference data. And that makes me wonder if, if, if even later in the process when, and we'll look at it in a moment, but later in the process when the PDT is, is actively designing or developing the work, if there's a DTO change that regardless of, of whomever makes the change, that the PDT should should be making the, the data requests or informing Maryland that that DTO has changed at that okay. point. To me, it's sort of, it, it'd be a concern about the left hand and the right hand not knowing what each other is doing. What, what do others think? I mean, is, is, is Core services really going to make DTO changes 
why like and not tell the PDT once the PDT is working on that should I can see problems between PDT teams where there's some overlap. Where like West Coast might need a change mm -hmm. and we're working on the same thing. And their change might not require data for what they're doing, but it would work some data from I can't quite hear what Dan's saying there. I think that's Dan Epstein that's talking. I can't quite yeah. hear him. <clears throat> I was just wondering if, if, if it could be a concern where um, a change from one PDT would result in more data needed from another PDT if, if we're working on similar areas, overlapping areas. Did that ever happen with like okay. room service or anything like that? <coughs> I'm trying to think of areas where this might have happened. I know we've made changes to room service. Today we saw, I think it was the CO, CTO, there was a new column added to identify, indicate whether it's part of a cross processing or co located. Co located. Set. And it looks like it's just an indicator field to us. So, what now? Do we need to go back and provide that for all the other data? So the so in the past we typically just if we make a change like that or we deal with it it's we kind of deal with it but I don't know if that's the process going to go forward. Oh. <coughs> so like for that change, all right, we find out what the cross of the courses are and then make some the SQL to update our yeah. data to make sure it's there. But, we really should but how are you communicating that to everyone process. else? Yeah. Yeah. So what about let me let me I think it's a good I think it's a good question that that Tom brings up about DTO changes after the PDT begins work in that area. Why don't we look why, why don't we talk through the process as it's depicted here for how how the how the process works once design and development is happening in the PDT. See how we, you know, and and see how we you know, fit the, fit this DTO piece into that. So I'm, I'm sort of pinning that or or tabling that question. Are there other Tom or anyone else other questions or reactions about the about the process up to this stage? Okay, hearing none, I'm going to, well, let me go back to the big picture. Um, and then, um, yeah. So, when, I, I, I would expect that we are working on steps one through five ahead of the, um, the 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 PDT work and and that I, that I'd expect that we're completing step five before a PDT is, is ready to is going to be ready for the data. Um, you know that that's the that's the intent and and the hope here. Um, so when the, when a PDT is, is ready to begin design, analysis design, and subsequently development on um, a body of work, they'll want to work with the implementing institution to evaluate the data that's been provided to ensure um, understanding and, and uh, understanding about both the, the concept and how the concepts involved in the functionality and how that how those are represented in the data um, and to ensure that um, that anticipated data needs from the PDT's perspective are met um, through that evaluation identifying whether the um, whether the flat files are sufficient, um, 
and working through data requests um, if the if they are not if additional data are needed. Um, and again, I'll get back down to the lower part of the page to talk through some of the details. Um, but the, the PDT would make those data requests um, through JIRA, through the data liaison on the PDT um, to uh, the implementing institution. Erin, um, as the, the li data liaison for implementing institution with support from me, will um, review and prioritize the request, um, knowing, knowing sort of, or having the best understanding and knowledge about the resources available at Maryland to to perform the work, um, and um, learning from the rationale in the request and from perspective from me is needed. You know what the um, you know what the what the kind of chaos perspectives are on on those priorities. As requests are met, um, the, the data are updated in the flat files, and the PDT then evaluates if the, um, if, if the flat files are sufficient, if they have what they need. Let's scroll down and talk through the parts of the process in, in, in more detail. You're going, where you see red in the document, I failed to mention this previously, reflects the most recent changes I made to the document, like within the past day or two. Um, so it's become it's become more apparent to me that we it's important for us to establish common understanding about the reference data between the implementing institution and the PDT. So I, I've I've expressly indicated that as a goal for this part of the process, and I've explicitly called for um, a, a handoff or evaluation, data evaluation meeting to take place um, when the PDT is ready to, to um, you know, to, to review the data, um, asking the, the PDT to identify when they are ready to do that and to, to work with Aaron to schedule that kind of meeting. Um, and through documentation that Maryland might provide or through the discussion that takes place in that evaluation meeting, um, we're, you know, exchanging, we're exchanging information and having the kind of dialogue necessary to ensure that kind of all parties understand um, what the needs are and what the what's been provided and where there might be gaps that need to be addressed. We're also really looking for um, the, the PDTs to um, determine whether there are additional data needs beyond the standard scope. Um, from, from its perspective, is it um, has as it has a more refined and detailed understanding about the the epics and user stories that are in play, um, and to identify data scenarios that have been very helpful for us to have to date um, to support testing uh, that that we want to ensure are met through the reference data that's been provided. Um, so, um, as, as a part of this evaluation, um, and, and this evaluation may not be just sort of one meeting, it might be sort of starting that and then figuring out sort of the steps to happen from there, um, but as part of this broader, this broader task, um, the, the PDTs would identify data scenarios for which data are required, and, and Maryland would review its data um, to identify corresponding data examples. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for the reference data liaison, both implementing institution and PDT to collaborate and um, just uh, have some shared understanding about what does it mean to define a data scenario? What information is needed? Is there a particular format or 
or components that, that, that comprise that scenario. Um, and I feel like as long as you all have agreement on that, then we should be in good shape and I'm happy. Can, um, are, will you let me know when you want to pause for questions? I have one. Sure. Let me um, just move through this last sure. part of this, of this task and then I'll pause. Um, through the evaluation, um, we, we want to identify circumstances in which um, the, there, there are data needs that, um, that Maryland does not is not able to meet given the circumstances we've discussed earlier in the meeting about not its business practice, not its way of doing things, um, you know, not something that, um, that, you know, within some easy and lightweight tra data transforming is something that they can provide um, and w without having to kind of make it up themselves. Um, and when, um, when, when those circumstances arise, um, the, 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 as we talked about before, the plan is that the, the PDT will likely, um, need to create that mock reference data, um, uh, unless some alternate agreement is made in that dialogue with the implementing institution. Um, I'll pause. So let me stop and pause there and, and go to Taryn with the first question and then see um, who else might have them. Thanks, Mike. Um, so my question was, I think that number six here is the first time that um, we you start to get at um, timing. And I, this might just speak to, you know, my lack of familiarity with the core processes, but I'm wondering if there's anything prior to in number six when the PDT is supposed to, you know, indicate when we're ready to evaluate reference data and schedule the handoff evaluation meeting. Is there anything that the PDT is supposed to be doing in terms of queuing or triggering uh, prior activities in the workflow or um, indicating timing or priority or any anything like that, or is it just is all of this going to kind of turn along without PDT input based on the core analysis processes and schedules, and we just need to let them know when we're ready for an evaluation meeting? I, I think that um, we want the PDTs to be primarily focused on active design and development towards delivering functionality. Um, such that I wouldn't anticipate PDT involvement in, in the previous steps. When, when the PDT feels like it's ready to begin work in, the, in a new area, like you, you can anticipate when you think that's going to happen. It's not like, it, and, and you can communicate that, and I think that would be great. So something like, hey, you know, we're starting work on our last you know, body of work until we're ready to begin analysis on this thing that we need data for, you know, just giving you a heads up. Maybe maybe that's still going to be two or three sprints away from when you're ready to start. But I think that kind of heads up could help Maryland confirm that its targets for when it's going to have the data ready are, are on track. Um, and then at really as you're getting closer to, to being ready to scheduling, to schedule a meeting to say, okay, now like, okay, we, we're ready to schedule something next week or something like that. Okay, but just, so just to confirm, um, Maryland does have like a, a, a rough schedule and rough targets of when these things are supposed to be delivered that, that comes from a source that's not the PDT, right? It's so, more like so, we're just, we're confirming the, um, the schedule that, they've received from core or from you or something like that? So as, as Maryland is in sort of a similar kind of position like a PDT is in terms of scheduling at work, um, you know, which means like you're incumbent on, on, on someone in, uh, above or in the process ahead of you to say we're ready to move on to the next milestone or something like that. Um, and and to have uh, have sort of the the priorities lined up for you. 
So Maryland doesn't have um, – Maryland gets – the work to Maryland gets queued up as core analysis and services are, are ready to sort of hand it off. So the, the, there's, I guess uh, – um, the timing, honestly, is a little bit it – is, is more vague than something that we represent on a calendar right now. Is that Does that help, or I'm not sure if I've just muddied the waters more? Yeah, I think I'm just trying to figure out, like, if we as the PT are supposed to be – if we're supposed to be triggering the, you know, the, the – it, what like what is what's step one in this process? I I let me I can go to a different window and open it. Like if we're supposed yeah, yeah. to be doing something that indicates nope. we're not. No, there's yeah the PDT does not have any responsibilities that it has to manage until we're talking about indicating readiness to okay. to evaluate that data. The only corollary I would add is to the extent that Tom determined how to involve PDT services representatives in core services design, mm -hmm. then someone from a PDT might be engaged in the work earlier, but, but that ball is more in Tom's court than, than defined as part of this process. Okay. I think that makes sense. Thanks, Mike. Sure. So PDTs would not be involved in the handoff then? In step two, correct. They would not be involved in that handoff. Um, um, uh, except to the extent that core analysis has core analysis would be involved, mm -hmm. and the BA working in core analysis on that theme is likely to be a BA part-time okay. assigned to okay. the PDT, and the same might apply from core services. Okay. And no, I have another question. No other, no JIRAs are assigned to implementing institution until. PDTs are filing change requests? Um, correct, as far as I've defined. Okay. You should feel comfortable with creating, and, and you, let's you and I talk through this okay. more about the earlier steps as, as you know, if, if and how we want to create JIRAs to represent the mapping and the, the, the extract transform kind of parts of the process. Okay. Uh, it might be nice to do it in the cash year so that we have some visibility on mm -hmm. how that work is progressing. Um, but you and I can figure that out. Okay. Okay. Um, let me move forward. I want to be time sensitive. We've got about 13 minutes remaining on our on our scheduled time here. Um, and the room I'm in does have another meeting immediately following it, so I, I, I will get kicked out. <laughs> um, but the the next part of the process here um, is for um, filing data requests um, for additional fields or records beyond what was provided by the implementing institution. I'm seeking that the, I'm looking for the, the product owner to have responsibility for validating um, a request as um, a, a, as sort of quote, truly being needed before requests are made um, and to, to help with kind of, um, you know, a perspective on prioritization and rationale before the request is actually made. Um, I think everyone's familiar with how I've requested we have um, one designee serving as liaison. Um, additional team members will certainly be involved in the process to consult as needed. Um, but I'm really trying to encourage um, a, a, a smaller group that's involved in the communication channel um, about the, the requests and the needs and the status and, and, and the like. Um, the PDT liaison will be responsible for filing the data requests. Um, and I'm asking that the group of liaisons collaborate to define what information is needed um, in JIRA to, to comprise a complete data request. Um, I'm going to jump ahead to the JIRA considerations section because this was um, an area of, of feedback that I was given that I've changed the process as a result of. Um, 
So uh, I have put, uh, and I gotta love the wiki for messing up my sub bullet structures here, <laughs> where you see the two stars. But anyway, um, I've I've um, indicated that um, Jira should be filed as tasks, um, not as as subtasks to a parent ticket. That will that prevents us from independently prioritizing the tickets. Um, I'm asking that tickets include a description of what's needed, a rationale, and a date when the PDT expects to need the data. That will help Aaron think about prioritization and how to balance the work among other data requests that, that they're receiving from three different PDTs and core services. Um, and that uh, component um, we're using, um, I've changed the component to be implementing institution reference data to reflect the team's responsibilities and the PDT component. Um, let me just jump to what I think is the biggest change that people are going to care about. You can read more through more of the details later, um, which is that I'm, I'm, I am not calling for uh, the, a separate JIRA ticket to be created for the PDT's work after the data request has been met. So we're aligning this JIRA process with our other JIRA processes where a request gets made, a request is met, and then the PDT uses the same ticket to do whatever it needs to do to implement that, just like we do with type state. Um, you know, so, so the PDT can use the same ticket to load the data if it wants to do so. Um, the, the counterbalance, to um, to me agreeing to that change is that um, I need visibility into the status of tickets and, and what has been met and not met by the implementing institution. And so um, I've asked Erin and, and she's agreed that we'll use a particular label that I've named here that Erin will add to a ticket to reflect that the request has been met from the from the implementing institution's perspective, um, and only Maryland adds and removes that label if a PDT believes that a request hasn't been met by reviewing the work that that was provided or that and the flat file changes. They contact Aaron, and you know, with Aaron confirming that there is more work to do on the implementing institution's part, she removes that label as needed to indicate it's open. It's an open issue on, on the implementing institution side. Um, questions on the, these JIRA considerations? I think that I was, I mean, I haven't, um, I, I, my only question was, um, since we're not use, having them be subtasks of a parent JIRA, how, is it not relevant to you to keep all of the um, reference data JIRAs together? Is I see below that you're saying that you want to link them to the user story or epics as applicable. And so I'm just wondering if it's, if that's the case, that it, it doesn't feel valuable to you to be able to see all of the reference data tickets in one place. Um, I can, we can still do so by looking at the reference data component. Okay. It's not necessary. Like, it's not necessary for me to see reference data as a theme of work. Yeah. Um, you know, just like I, just like I, I, we don't we don't necessarily look for. Um, oh. Try. I, I, let me not try to give another example. I'm just yeah, I mean, it's like analysis yeah. tasks. Like, we don't look for yeah. analysis tasks as a theme of work. That makes sense. And I guess I, yeah, like using some sort of a filter to, a reference data filter to look at the component makes sense to me, too. Okay, thanks. Great. Sure thing. Okay, I'm going to move back up. Um, so, so let me talk for a moment about timing of data requests. We, we are asking for the PDTs to indicate a date when they expect to need the data. Um, and the implementing institution team will review the request and the requested delivery date and will respond with when they um, project that they would be able to, to provide the data. Um, the agreement, we, we have a standing agreement that from a management lens we have made with 
between KS and Maryland as an implementing institution. And that agreement was that we would support a two-week turnaround time. I think we're going to find that for, for many cases, two weeks is much longer than will be necessary to, to, to meet the data needs. Um, and um, so I, I wouldn't expect that that would be the norm, but I can't establish a different expectation. Um, but I know that, that the implementing institution data team has regularly scheduled meetings in which they review and work on the data requests. And Aaron has indicated to me that they're happy to review the frequency um, and scheduling of those meetings that if we're finding there's a concern about responsiveness or anything like that, that we can, we can adjust as necessary um, kind of how and when those meetings take place. Um, and, you know, we'll, so we'll, all, we'll touch base with each other and provide that kind of feedback to Erin as needed based on how things progress. So when we identify a date, it needs to be two weeks out from the date that we, at least two mm -hmm. weeks out from the date that we mm -hmm. file it? No, thank you for asking to clarify that. You are, you're, asked to pro you're asked to provide the date in which you would really like to receive the data. And let's hope you don't say yesterday. <laughs> let's, let's hope, you know, hopefully everyone's being reasonable about, you know, about the, the date that you're requesting. I'm not asking you to say two weeks from now. I'm just saying that I can't, I can't say Maryland will respond within three days or five days or something like that. I, I'm asking you to, you to indicate a date in which you'd like to read data and then Maryland, that, which enables Maryland to say, okay, that helps us understand priorities. How does this stack against the other requests that we have and, and respond to gotcha. a projection of when we can deliver it, likely being well in advance of a two-week turnaround but I, again, I just can't set an expectation of less than two weeks. That makes sense and will require the PDTs to, when doing analysis, to try to think of data requests ahead of time to get them into implementing institution as soon as possible. What's happened lately is that we've been kind of playing catch up. So the devs have been saying, we need this and we need that. And it's like we need it yesterday. And so we've kind of got ourselves into a pickle. Um, uh, agreed or, and understood. Because um, if it's going to be a two-week turnaround, I mean, that right there is a sprint and could significantly impact the work that we do. But if yeah. we do some um, upfront thinking and really try to flesh things out, ahead of time, knowing in the end we're going to have some high-priority data requests that are going to need some quick turnaround, I think that will help you guys as well. Yeah, it's, as to me, this is Aaron, as soon as you know of a data request, get it to us or at least give us a heads up in the chat. The earlier, the better. And, and my hope is that by, by being, be, being more explicit about the data evaluation and the communication that takes place around that in step six or whatever it is, that, um, that we can try to identify those kinds of gaps sooner. And, um, and I guess the only other, the other piece that I'd add is, and, and this is in step eight, um, in terms of how prioritization outcomes play out um, from when Aaron, when Aaron gives a response about priority or balancing the request among, you know, balancing your request among other requests, um, we may, it may be worth the PDT's while to investigate whether it, it might be faster to take an alternative approach and mock something on its own. That, that can be on the table. It may not want to be, we may not want to make that a regular practice, but, but we should keep that in our back pocket um, and, um, and determine if, 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 there are, if there are solutions like that, that that the PDT is more comfortable with 
in terms of, of timing and progress on sprint goals. Okay, um, well, here's what I'm going to ask us to do. Why don't we, um, we, we, we've covered through step eight here. Step nine was just loading the data, which is a PDT internal task. And then step 10 was just consulting on data issues as they arise after they've been initially loaded, which is really like more, more data requests that we've already discussed. So um, why don't I ask folks to review the text on the wiki page around steps eight, nine, and 10, um, and to email me with any questions you've got. I'll, compo I'll, I'll compile those with some responses and we'll send them back out to the group um, and, um, and go from there. And if you, I, I, I apologize to have to cut us short. Um, Feel free to also send me any additional questions that you have that you didn't get to pose or anything you think of as we wrap up now, um, and, and, and we'll, um, we'll have some dialogue around those two. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much thanks, for your time. Mike. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>